You can? Okay, so it's the same question whose link I have sent. So if you want, I can send the link again. Uh, Open it up, read it. And uh, once you have understood the question, just let me know. Okay. You can just type in understood if you got the question. Okay, so many of you have already started talking about approaches. So uh, let us understand question through a very simple example. Let's say we have a string ABC. So what we have to do is we have to count the number of vowels in all the substrings. We have to count the number of vowels in all the substrings of this string. Okay. So uh, all of you understand what is the meaning of a substring. Substring is just a contiguous portion of a string. Okay. So just like uh, you have a subarray, which is a, no, it's not like a subset. It is not like a subset or subsequence. When I say contiguous, the most important word is contiguous. So it means that you cannot skip characters in between. So if let's say you have something like this, then this, what I have shaded, can be a substring, but N, G, K cannot be a substring, okay? So substring means contiguous things. So first you have to consider all the substrings and then in each substring you have to find how many vowels are there and that count will be your answer. So who is going to tell me how many substrings will A, B, C have? Okay, one of you is saying eight, okay, others? sum of n natural numbers, okay? That looks promising. Six, it will not be eight. So uh, if someone said eight, you might have said because uh, you might have thought that, hey, each character can either be taken, not taken. So two choices. So please don't apply that thing over here because if you take A and take C without taking B, what you get is AC and AC is not a substring. It is not a contiguous section. So here the contiguous section is first is A. So A is a substring. And then you have AB. So AB is another substring. And then you have ABC, which is yet another substring. And then you have B. B is also a substring. And then you have BC, that is another substring. And then you have just C, that is the final substring. So uh, tell me in this sub in this substring how many vowels are there? There is only one vowel, a. In this substring, how many vowels are there? Only one vowel. That is a. In this substring, again just a. In this substring, zero. In this substring, zero. And in the final substring, zero. So what is the sum of one plus one plus one plus zero plus zero plus zero? That is three. So the output for this has got to be three. That is what the question is. Is it making sense to everyone? The question now. So what can be the brute force solution over here? Any thoughts on that? So uh, brute force solution could be as simple as uh, you consider all the substrings, right? You consider all the substrings. So uh, for that, you can write a nested for loop. You can say for I varying from zero to minus one and now inside it we can have j varying from i to n minus one so for every pair of i comma j the portion from index i to index j represents a unique substring so now you can just compute how many vowels are there inside it so you can have a function written inside here called as count vowels and what that does is that takes the substring from i to j and does the count. Can anyone quickly tell me the time complexity of this approach if you go by this? Okay, so here, you know, we can quite clearly see that because of the first two for loops, it is going to take n square time for sure. And now this logic, is going to take n more time because in the worst case, your substring will be of size n and uh, counting all the characters inside it, uh, I mean, counting all the vowels will require you to 
traverse through it. So n further time will be taken here. So n square into n is going to be n cube, right? Okay, so can we optimize it? Is that possible? You guys have watched this video, reverse lookup in one dimension, right? Okay, so what, what, what was the question over here? The question over here was uh, to find the sum of all subarrays of an array, right? The similar thing we have to do here, we have to look at all the substrings of a string. So here in the brute force approach, you are extracting, you are first generating all the substrings and then looking over them. But in re reverse lookup, what we can think of is, we can think that, okay, if we have a string S, uh, let us look at uh, ith character and let's say if s of i is vowel, then we will try to figure out that how many substrings will contain s of i inside them. We'll try to figure out how many substrings will contain s of i inside them. This is what we will try to do. So uh, if you have watched that video, you'll be very clear with the concept, but uh, still I would like to once talk about it. So let's say you have something like uh, B, D, A, W, E. Okay, look at this A, just look at this A, okay? I'm going to even highlight you for your easy looks. Just look at this A. Can you tell me how many substrings will contain this A inside them? How many substrings of this string will contain A inside them? Okay, some of you are saying uh, nine, some of you are saying three, some of you are saying three into three, which is much more explanatory, okay? Okay, so uh, the entire substring itself will definitely contain A, okay? Also, if I just talk about this much part, also contains A. Also, if I just talk about this much part, contains A, right? Okay, this entire thing contains A. This entire thing also contains A. This thing also contains A, right? Cool, okay, this, alone is also a substring and it contains A. This is also a substring containing A. And finally, this is also a substring containing A. Can you see all of them are substrings and all of them contain A? And how many of them are there? Nine of them are there. Now, because this particular character being a vowel is contained in nine different substrings, so I can increment my count by nine solely for this, solely for S of I. Are you getting this point, yes or no? Yeah. Similarly, uh, if I'm able to figure out how many substrings will contain E, let's say five substrings will contain E, then for this E, I can add five to my count, five further to my count. So this is the approach. Now, how to generate this thing very easily that how many substrings will contain a particular character. So this is super easy. I can say that, uh, okay, look at this section. So I'm going to paint it like that. See, any substring that starts with either B, B or A, that starts with either B, D or A and ends at A, W or E, ends at A, W or E, will for sure contain this A, right? Any substring that starts from any character out of B, D and A, I'm writing it, any substring that starts from B, D, or A, and ends at A, W, or E will definitely pass through this A. Isn't it a common sense? Just think about it and let me know, yes or no?
Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay. So the basic rule of combinatorics says that if you have X choices for one thing and Y choices for another thing, then total number of choices that you have is X into Y. That is the basic rule of product. Okay. So here I can say that, you know, there are three possible starting points. There are three possible starting points and there are three possible ending points. So total number of substrings will be three into three nine. So I can say there'll be nine substrings which will definitely cross this A no matter what. Is it making sense to everyone? This same logic, exact same logic has been explained to you in this video as well. So when you go back today, you can just rewatch this or watch this if you have not watched. Uh, but is that making sense to everyone irrespective of whether you did that video or not? Are you getting it right now at the present moment? Yeah? Okay, so now what does it mean? So can we generalize it? Looks like, yes, we can generalize it. So tell me if this is ith index, then how many choices do you have for your starting point? How many choices do you have for your starting point? From zero till index i, how many characters are there? i plus one characters are there, right? So my starting point, for, for the starting point, I have got i plus one choices. And for ending point, how many choices do we have? Let's assume that the string is of size n. So for ending point, how many choices do we have? We have n minus i choices. So total number of substrings will be i plus one into n minus i, right? Total number of substrings will be i plus one into n minus i. And these many substrings will definitely contain this vowel. So I can say that, hey, for this vowel, I can increment my count by this multiplied by n minus i. That's the logic, as simple as that. Is it making sense? How many of you are perfectly clear with the logic. So uh, I have been asked this question time and again from a lot many people that there are a lot many concepts that we get to learn, but how to apply them. I mean, this is how you apply them. You get a question. See, first thing is you learn them. If you just uh, are aware of the fact, if you have heard it from someone that there are so many concepts, so many concepts, and without studying them, you're worrying how we will apply it does not make any sense. Because once you study them, and if you are attending the live classes, giving tests for sure you will keep seeing questions which are related to them and then you will apply and then you will be able to appreciate it further yeah okay great so now how many of you can code this question i think i have a code written in c plus plus but do you feel you guys can do it on your own so uh see one thing that could have happened in this question is uh we are doing so many multiplications. We are multiplying i plus one with n minus i. And because we are multiplying again and again and we are adding them to account. So what can happen here is integer overflow, right? But if you read the question, question just tells me that, hey, due to large constraints, the answer may not fit into 32 bit integer. But what is the maximum bit size that you can have to store integer type data? 64. Right? So instead of int, you can use long, long, right? So it has said, please be careful. It simply means that it is saying us to use long, long instead of using int, right? So what I have done is I have created long, long answer equals to zero. So answer is initialized to zero. This for loop is to simply iterate through the string that we have from index zero till the final index. And now this if check is to, uh, just take a look whether the ith character is a vowel or not. So if ith character is a vowel, then if you remember this expression, i plus one into n minus i, n is word dot length. This represents how many substrings word i will be a part of. So we are just adding that to the answer and finally we are returning the answer. That's the simple code for this. Is it all clear? How many of you absolutely understand what the code is doing here? Okay, so who will quickly talk about the time complexity of this approach? How much time does it take? 
you can see there is a loop which is going to run for n time. If the size of the world is n, it will run from zero to n in steps of one unit. So there will be n iterations. In each iteration, you are doing some constant work only because it's like you are just doing a comparison, let's say five comparisons, and then you are doing maybe one addition, one subtraction, one multiplication, one assignment. So there are, they can be thought of as you're doing roughly 10 to 12 constant time operations. So uh, it can be termed as constant. So it is order of n with respect to time complexity. Any extra space that we are using here? No extra space, right? Okay. So um, those of you who still are a little on a, those of you who still are on a shaky ground with getting perfect clarity of this, please do watch this. And uh, if it has been one week already in the course, you must have watched it. See, this is lecture number uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's just eight lectures. So even if on one day you, you watch one lecture or two lecture, you must have come till here. So please do watch it again. It will give you a lot of clarity. Hi, my name is Vivek and I'm one of the co-founders at Programming Partshala. Prior to this, I've been a software developer at Amazon. And before that, I had done my BTEC in computer science from IIT BHU. If you have been loving the videos and would like to continue learning with us, please check out our comprehensive interview preparation program called as Renesa, which covers data structures, algorithms, CS fundamentals, low level design and high level design in a great detail.